We all know the classic icebreaker question, what would you do if you won the lottery, right? Well, I already know the answer to that because I did. And today, I'd like to share the story of how I won $360 million and lost it all in the same day. Now, if there are two things you need to know about me, it's my name, Kira Murphy, and the fact that every year on my birthday, I buy myself a lottery ticket. This year was no different. I went to the local store, slapped my hands on the counter and said, one lottery ticket, please. I fished out a $12 bill I'd won in a bar fight against a pirate and handed it over. <laughs> the next step was choosing my numbers. 27 for the age I was turning, 48, the first two digits of my PIN number, one and seven, the last two digits of my PIN number, <laughs> 60 for the number of people currently seated in this room right now, no need to count, <laughs> and finally, 51, the number of tigers I had single-handedly tamed when living in El Dorado. That's a story for another time. <laughs> Ticket in hand, I left the store feeling lucky. And the lottery didn't cross my mind for the rest of the day until it was time for the draw to come on TV. I sat there, heart racing, as the numbers rolled in one by one. 27, 48, 1, 7, 60, and 57. Oh. <laughs> I was gutted, so close. But then the lottery host picked up the last ball wiped away a speck of dirt to reveal not a 57, but a 51. My numbers. He yelled, you, Kira Murphy, you're the winner, and pulled me through the screen before pressing a tiny check with the number 360 million on it into my hand. I remember my face frozen in shock before the realization hit that my dream of winning the lottery had finally come true. So I did what anyone who'd just won the lottery would do. I immediately gave each of the 51 tigers I tamed while living in El Dorado a million dollars. I then called up my old friend Elon and negotiated a deal for the Tesla company, because who wouldn't? I installed tanning beds in the coldest parts of Siberia and a fleet of snow machines in Death Valley. My bank account was swiftly dwindling and it hadn't even been 10 minutes since the lottery draw had taken place. But something about having an absurd amount of money like that makes you want to spend it. Like the fact that it came into your life so quickly means it ought to go away so quickly too. So I kept spending. I bankrolled the production of James Cameron's Avatar 3, so you can check for my name in the credits when that comes out next year. I invested millions into a soy sauce company that inexplicably went bankrupt within the hour. I signed up for singing lessons with Beyonce, but after the first one, we both decided there's a reason I speak on stage. <laughs> 23 hours after I'd received an amount of money that most people would struggle to spend in a lifetime, but I couldn't seem to hold on to, I was down to my final $60,000. So what did I do with it? I slipped 60 envelopes, each with $1,000, under every one of your chairs here. Go on, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I only came up with that idea right now. With my final $60,000, I filled my room with every kind of flower imaginable. Lilies and tulips, roses and gardenias, the rare gorgonzola tree, so many flowers that by the time they were all in my room, I couldn't even smell them anymore. My senses were so overloaded. Now some might call my spending frivolous, and to be honest, they wouldn't be wrong, but I was happy with my life before the money, and I'll be happy with it afterwards. Most of the memories of the things I spent my money on have faded now, and almost all of the flowers have died, but I pressed one, and I keep it right here, 
to remind me that having $360 million is nice and all, but it'll never be as nice as the feeling of buying yourself a bouquet, let alone a room full of flowers, just because. That's what I think anyway. And if I change my mind, there's always next year's lottery to win. <laughs>